What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 20th jailbreak update video and we have some very interesting stuff to talk about today. So in this one we're going to be talking about the Apple TV jailbreak which just got released last week, the CIA and their leaked documents, an update on the iPhone 7 and an update on the iOS 10.3 jailbreak, some newly updated tweaks and more. And as usual make sure you guys go back and watch the previous episodes if you haven't already. A lot of that information is still relevant as of right now. So in episode 19 I mentioned that the Apple TV 4 jailbreak for tvOS 10 through 10.1 was going to be released very soon and sure enough just a few days after making that video the jailbreak was released it was released by Jonathan Levin aka Morpheus and it works on tvOS 10 through 10.1 and it's going to support 9.1 through 10.1 but it's not supported just yet I posted a guide on dailyifix.com I will leave that link down in the description below if you have an Apple TV 4 on tvOS 10 through 10.1 and you're interested in jailbreaking now let's talk about the CIA and their affiliation with jailbreaking and these leaked documents so over 8,000 documents got leaked today basically showcasing the tactics that the CIA CIA uses with their exploits for iOS, Android, cars, smart TVs, you name it, 8,000 pages of documents, millions of lines of code of the exploits they've used in the past. The documents show that the agency has multiple zero-day exploits working right now on Android and iOS. So basically, whoever is in possession of these documents right now can use the same exploits that the CIA use, which is just insane if you think about it. You know, some of these are just zero-day exploits that Apple had no clue even existed, you know, and the CIA hid them from them. And, you know, whoever has these documents out, they've been leaked, can use those zero-day exploits on, you know, whatever they please. So included in these leaks was a table showing all the code names the CIA used for the exploits and one of them was actually named Ironic which is named after the hacker Ionic and his iOS kernel exploit which is pretty funny. Also found in these documents and this is very scary is an exploit that would manipulate car software and cause fatal accidents. So yeah we've always heard about these stories of the CIA being able to kill somebody without a trace and now we have you know somewhat proof of them actually you know using these exploits to cause fatal accidents that you know have no trace back to the CIA. There's also an exploit found that targeted Samsung smart TVs, which would basically just eavesdrop and listen to your conversations in the house while it looked like the TV was off, but it was actually on and sending that data back to the CIA. So yeah, this is some insane stuff. I mean, these documents just got leaked a few hours ago, so kind of take everything with a grain of salt right now because some of this stuff can be misinterpreted. But if you're interested, I will have a link down below to the documents and more information about these documents. So now let's talk about the iPhone 7 jailbreak. So as I mentioned in previous episodes, Beta 3 of the Mock Portal jailbreak isn't the most unstable jailbreak in the world, but it's also not close to stable right now. So those of you who are new to jailbreaking or you can just live without a jailbreak, I would still continue to wait for that final version to be released. The more stable version with Substrate enabled by default, I would just continue to wait on that. And the reason is because you are just more prone to messing up your device and losing your jailbreak. And by messing up your device, I mean getting yourself in a boot loop that requires a restore to fix it. Now, it doesn't seem as common to you guys because maybe it hasn't happened to you, but just go ahead and check Reddit. You'll see every single day there's a new person losing their jailbreak due to a boot loop, and it's not even always related to AppSync. Now, on the flip side, if you have jailbroken on the past, but you're still waiting for a stable release for the iPhone 7, I say that you can go ahead and jailbreak now. You know, there's not too much harm in it if you know what you're doing and if you don't add any pirate repos. You just need to be very careful with what you install and also make sure you know what you're doing with the terminal commands to manually respring and fix substrate and things like that. If you're still confused, about the terminal commands you need to run to fix substrate and respring and things like that, I will have a link down in the description below that will help you out for sure with those commands and what you need to be doing when you're on an iPhone 7 on this unstable jailbreak. And as I mentioned before, the reason the iPhone 7 jailbreak is taking so long to get a stable jailbreak is because Luca is stuck. Achieving a stable jailbreak for the iPhone 7 is a very difficult task. And I mean, Luca's just stuck. Like I said, I've talked about this previously extensively in one of my previous episodes. So you can go back and look at the video. It's called iPhone 7 jailbreak never coming, I believe. So go back and watch that for more details on where Luca is stuck. Now let's talk about the iOS 10.3 jailbreak and kind of an update on my last iOS 10.3 jailbreak update video where I talked about the new Apple file system possibly opening up new vulnerabilities and new exploits. So someone on Reddit made a thread titled will the Apple file system make jailbreaking harder and Luca Tedesco actually chimed in and said simply no it won't change anything. And while it doesn't make a difference to the kernel which is what jailbreaks target I still believe that the new file system will open up new vulnerabilities just because that's the nature of new software. Anytime there's something brand new there's always going to be bugs there's always going to be new vulnerabilities found inside of it. Now will these lead to a jailbreak? 
I have no clue, that's still yet to be seen. And that leads me to the next topic, which is MOSEC 2017. So the 2017 Mobile Security Conference will take place in China on June 23rd. And if you remember last year at MOSEC 2016, Pengu was there and that's when they demonstrated the iOS 10 beta jailbreak. So could Pengu be back and maybe demonstrate an iOS 10.3 or maybe an iOS 11 jailbreak? Who knows, it'd be awesome to see but we just don't know at this point even if they're gonna be there or not. It would definitely be cool if Pengu did demonstrate a new jailbreak, but it's hard to get as excited as we did with iOS 10 because as you guys know, they demonstrated the iOS 10 beta jailbreak, but they never actually released a public iOS 10 jailbreak for all of us. So it's kind of hard to get too excited about it because we don't know for sure if it's actually gonna get released, even if they do demonstrate it. And the last thing I wanna talk about is just some miscellaneous news. So a developer named Wizage or Wizage achieved something I've been wanting for years, music that continues to play through a respring. So this is amazing. As you can see here, it's playing through the respring and it's in an early alpha stage right now, but it will be open sourced when the bugs get squashed. The infamous Control Center Tweak Polish just got updated for iOS 10 and I have since deleted Flip Control Center because I just love Polis. You can check it out now on the Big Boss repo. And the subreddit Tweak Bounty just crossed the $2,500 mark, meaning that random Redditors have paid Tweak developers over $2,500 for developing tweaks that were requested, which is just awesome for the community. So that is it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more jailbreak update videos, jailbreak tutorials, news, a lot more coming to the channel. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.